This is Pat Solver with the Dr. Ways In, and do we have an episode for you today? I have with me Stefan Marsh, who is a real live inventor. Uh, he actually makes things, and what he's making now is so exciting. It's a new solution for an old problem, and that is uh, uh, chronic obstructive sleep apnea. So, welcome, Stefan. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So you're in uh, close to Boston, I understand, and we welcome you uh, here in uh, the Google Hangout on Air in California. And what I wanted to start out with is to ask you uh, to just describe for us. So uh, your product is called, and your company is called Air Ring. And um, what is it? Why do we need it? Okay. Uh, well, the little Air Ring device, this little thing that you see here, um, it's, its whole purpose is to administer a treatment for obstructive sleep apnea, uh, which we did not invent the treatment. The treatment uh, was invented by some very smart doctors and, and, and researchers um, to allow human beings who stop breathing at night uh, to, to continue to breathe and get air into their body with oxygen so that they don't uh, have a bunch of other complications from a, 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 a deprivation or, or lowering of the oxygen in their blood. How did you do that? What is what is the technology? Okay, there's a breakthrough here. It's an invention, as you called me an inventor, right? Um, the, at the heart of it, uh, you probably can't see, but if you go to our website, fundairing.com, it will explain it in a video. Right in this little uh, black area you hear, this area you see here, which is sort of like a grill, there are many, many, many little micro blowers and these little micro blowers uh, I designed for actually another reason. I designed them to blow air through an energy technology through tiny little channels. And once I designed the, the little micro blowers uh, and I did the calculations on the airflow that they could accomplish at what pressures, it, it was amazing to me. It was my aha moment is that I, I realized that they could blow enough air at the right pressure to actually simulate the big equipment that you, you, is hard to tolerate. And I could do it in such a small area and if I made it into something that was comfortable and could fit in your nose to create a seal that was battery operated, so there's no wires, no hoses, no, it was, it's just a comfortable little thing that people might actually use it. And so it's the microblowers which are the, are, the, are the key to this. So that's the invention and that's fantastic. But uh, what some people may be asking is, look, this mask I put in the CPAP, it goes over my mouth and my nose and you're just proposing to stick this thing in my nose. Uh, how's that going to work? What if I'm a mouth breather? My education from uh, my uh, my tutoring from uh, the, the pulmonologist that I know at Beth Israel and other places here in Boston have told me that um, evolution has uh, done a good job for human beings in designing the nose to do filtering, uh, humidification. We're not really meant to breathe through our mouths. And oftentimes you'll find that if you can actually breathe through your nose, that the, the default default condition is that you close your mouth. That is the default condition. And if for some reason there's a problem with your nose, nature is giving you a backup, you can open your mouth. So, so not everybody breathes through their mouth, the mouth breathers. Uh, and in fact, if they are having air pushed into their nose and they're getting all of the breathing, the air that they need to do this, it's quite likely that nature will shut their mouth. And so that may be good. If that does is not the case, maybe there's an obstruction, a, uh, an accident, uh, some damage or something. Uh, one thing you could do would be a simple chin strap. Uh, but again, no hoses or anything, but it might actually be able to help you keep your mouth shut while you're breathing through your nose. Okay. So um, give us a high level overview of how you go from where you are right now till uh, when I can either you know, buy it at my local pharmacy or get it prescribed by my doc and have it covered by my insurance. Okay. Um, well, the, in the proof of concept prototype, uh, we are talking, when I, when I refer to that generally, I'm talking about the uh, micro pumps, the micro blowers that I just mentioned to you. In, in terms of the physical device and the nose buds that actually form the seal and keep it in your nose, we already have this, while this is a model, we have already tested that. And so part of the physical design is done. Uh, there's a, there's an, a, a custom battery in there. That's sort of really well-known technology. So it's really the microblowers that are the sort of question mark, if you will. And so first we have to prototype those and uh, it has to be approved by FDA. So, so we have to make 
uh, units that can be tested by humans. Um, we're hoping for a 510K uh, type of uh, program where um, it is really, as I say, it's a, it's a miniaturization of an existing machine with, which has a lot of history behind it, right? So hopefully we can take the prototype of the pumps, put them in such a device, um, do some testing, uh, gets FDA approval. It has to be manufactured. So we're talking, I'm not allowed to say who, but we're talking with some multi-billion dollar companies for manufacturing the product. And there's molds that you make uh, that, that create the plastic molded parts and that sort of thing. So when I look at the, uh, the technology and the steps that it has to go through, the most, uh, being a technologist, I kind of understand those. It's the FDA approval that I'm a little, uh, is bigger question mark on because we don't know what they'll think about it. We think that they'll think it's clever and small, but hopefully they'll look at it the same way. So when I just add that time frame up in those sort of sequences, uh, that's why we said 2017. I mean, I'd like for it to be sooner and depending on resources, maybe it could be uh, knock on wood, but um, I was trying, trying to be fair about it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Stefan. This has been fascinating, and um, I wish you good luck. And uh, why don't we why don't we close here just by having you give people the web address where they can go over and give you ten or twenty thousand dollars to help make this thing go faster? Uh, that would be great. That would be wonderful. <laughs> uh, if if uh, people would like to visit our website, which has a link to Indiegogo. Uh, they could go to www.fundairing.com um, or they could go directly to Indiegogo and if they search on Airing, A-I-R-I-N-G, um, then they would be able to find us and uh, they can make a, a straight contribution or they could, they call them perks there, they could uh, make a contribution uh, by sort of buying, if you will, a perk. Uh, and, and that has uh, a voucher for some, some number of devices in the future when they are available. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. And I'll let you get back to the business of helping <laughs> us all out. Right. So, such a pleasure. Thank you so much.